Can you give me their last known coordinates? Hal asks her. She nods, pointing him towards Tokyo. So, he picks up with a burst of speed, traveling at Mach 11 in low atmosphere, and as he arrives at Tokyo, he uses his new ring to filter through the light spectrum until the drone finally appears in front of him. Got you! He shouts, tightening his fist, constructing a green katana that swings through the air, slicing at the drone. But you're probably wondering how we got here. Hal Jordan had been back on Earth for a bit, having quit the Green Lantern Corps, but things didn't stay normal. While Hal Jordan and Kilowog are living there, Hal gained a new ring, tried to get Carol Ferris back, and battled against a guy in Manhunter armor. But eventually, he discovered that Sinestro was here on Earth. Sinestro, without a power ring, with no Yellow Lantern powers at all, wanted to meet with Hal Jordan. This is Comic Story, and where I take your favorite comic books, turn them into audio drama so that you know what's going on in the world of comics. If you enjoy this type of content, consider joining us at Patreon to keep this channel alive and going. And thank you to all of our Patreons. Now we start with issue number four. Sinestro looks at Hal with a smile as they both sit at the diner counter. You don't seem too pleased to see me. Glancing down at the green sword that Hal has constructed, but he raises an eyebrow. Brash and delusional as always, Jordan. Let me put this in terms that you can understand. If you don't put that blade away, it won't just be my blood on your hands. The villain says as he holds up a detonator, explaining that with the tap of a button, sonic bombs will destroy Coast City. The sword disappears and Hal demands to know what Sinestro wants. The former Green Lantern motioning to Hal's brand new ring. Yours out of power? Hal asks him, but he refuses, knowing that Sinestro will simply destroy Coast City anyway. I don't want to destroy your city, Sinestro snaps, slamming his fist onto the counter. But he calms down, explaining that if Hal gives him the ring, he will simply leave so that he can return to his home. You understand that, don't you? Sinestro says, and Hal finally relents, giving Sinestro the ring, explaining that it won't work. Please, I've broken the will of many rings. This is nothing I can't do, Sinestro says with a smile as he slips the ring on. He stares at it for a moment before frowning. What are you playing at, Jordan? This is not a Green Lantern ring. Hal smiles, holding up his hand, the ring glowing green and flying back to his grasp. Something new, something that can only be used by me. Sinestro sighs and nods. Pity. He says before pressing the detonator. Hal jumps to his feet as he feels the city beginning to rumble, and he promises that Sinestro won't get far, but the villain shakes his head, walking towards the exit. Won't I? You're not that quick. Hal Jordan transforms into the Green Lantern, putting in a call to his fastest friend. Already en route, what do you have here, Hal? Barry says as he speeds along as the Flash. Hal steps outside as he quickly explains the situation to Barry. He and Barry have an idea, that the speedster can use a construct to home in on the vibrational frequency of the bombs. I'm at room at 52nd, can you pick up a construct? Hal asks as he holds out his hand. The blur of red and lightning shoots by him, grabbing it. Hal flies into the air as Barry quickly speeds through the city, using the construct to home in on the bombs. Finding them, he tosses them into the air for Hal to destroy. But Hal begins to sweat. The new ring doesn't have the power and range of his old ring. Hey, Barry, you need to hurry. I'm at my limit. Hal gasps, and Barry nods, putting on another burst of speed, finding the last bomb, tossing it into the air. With the city safe, Hal lowers himself to the ground where he takes a knee. But his friend is there, helping him back up. Hal smiles at his old buddy. Thanks for answering the call. That's a friend's four, Green Lantern. Barry answers, and the two quickly move through the city, trying to locate Sinestro, but the villain has disappeared. He's up to something. I could feel it, Hal says, finally asking Barry if he can take a look at Ferris' hangar, because it was attacked. He's hoping to get a clue as to what is actually going on. So a short time later, Barry is looking at the damaged hangar and the drones. Looking at the drones, Barry points to a spot where something was placed on them. He isn't sure what, and the pair are interrupted as Carol walks in. Carol! It's been too long, Barry says as he hugs his old friend. Barry points out that he and Iris should have Hal and Carol over, but things become awkward as Hal explains that Carol is engaged to someone else, and Barry smiles nervously. Congratulations, he says as he shuffles his feet and looks sheepishly at Hal. They finally turn back to the drones, with Carol asking what was placed against her property. But Barry isn't sure. He said he was looking for a way to get off-planet. Maybe he thought he could use the drones to get back to Kuragar? 
Barry, we need these drones operational for a military demonstration in a few days. If they don't work, Ferris Aircraft is going to be grounded for good, Carol says, and Barry nods, suggesting that they do a full system diagnostic first. I'll call Terrific Tech, see if they can't get you a forensic analysis. Barry tells her before giving her a hug. Carol thanks him and walks out. But before she leaves, Barry gets an alert of an extraterrestrial attack in Los Angeles. Sinestro? Hal asks, but Barry isn't sure and Hal nods as they both begin to change. Let's go. We need to stop him before he can do any more damage. Besides, I owe you one. Hal says with a smile as both heroes launch themselves out of the hangar. They quickly arrive at Los Angeles, where they find a tornado ripping through the city in meteors falling from the sky. Flash rushes over to the tornado while Hal launches himself towards the meteors. He manages to destroy the meteors with a green construct ball until he spots major disaster causing all of the trouble from a nearby rooftop. The B-lister shouts to Hal, promising that he won't be able to stop him, but Hal smiles, creating a constructed camera. Stop you? I just want your picture. Hal tells him as he clicks the camera, creating a massive green flash. This distracts major disaster, allowing the flash to run in and knock the villain out. Afterwards, Hal fills Barry in on everything that's been going on since he returned to Earth, which includes his new ring, Sinestro's attacks, and the awkward relationship he has with Carol Ferris now. Flash nods, telling Hal to watch his back. Meanwhile, all the way back at Ferris Air, the drones suddenly reactivate and they take off into the night sky. The digital billboard comes to life in Hub City, revealing Sinestro's face. The people of this planet have been complacent. Sinestro begins to say, telling the people of the world that they have allowed their planet to become consumed by greed, weakness, and lawlessness. He promises that he will save them, but he must force them to feel the full fury of fear. His words are then punctuated as the Ferris drones begin to fly over the city, bombing it relentlessly, destroying buildings and forcing people to run and scream in fear. At the Ferris control room in Coast City, Hal bursts through the door demanding to know what is going on, and Carol rushes to his side, explaining that Sinestro has taken control of the drones and is launching attacks on cities around the world. Hal, we've never had a live pilot beat the drones in any scenario, she whispers to him. But Hal nods as he looks at her. Let's see how they do against me then. As the Ferris employees continue to work to track the drones on the satellites, Hal rushes out of the room and in moments is flying through the air as the Green Lantern. Carol directs him to Las Vegas, where one of the drones is about to open fire with its missile, and in their control room at the abandoned missile silo of Tucson, Sinestro is looking at the drone pilots, ordering them to fire. The missile bay door then opens up on the drone, but it's King Shark that reports that there is no impact. Next to the drone, Green Lantern is already wrapping up a green rope around the bomb, whirling it in circles, slamming it back into the drone. At the drone control room, Sinestro narrows his eyes down. Jordan. He hisses before ordering his pilots to cloak the remaining drones. Back at the Ferris control room, Carol grabs the radio telling Hal that the drones have become cloaked and they can't track them on the satellites anymore. Can you give me their last known coordinates? Hal asks her. She nods, pointing him towards Tokyo. So, he picks up with a burst of speed, traveling at Mach 11 in low atmosphere, and as he arrives at Tokyo, he uses his new ring to filter through the light spectrum until the drone finally appears in front of him. Got you! He shouts, tightening his fist, constructing a green katana that swings through the air, slicing at the drone. Back over in Tucson, Sinestro slams his fist into the console, angry that the primitive human technology is so slow, so useless compared to his ring. He finally looks at the yellow ring on his finger before turning back to the pilots. Commence final destination. Full speed. It's time to make the people of this planet fear again. Hal floats over Tokyo as Carol explains that the remaining two drones have already attacked more cities. I'm scared, Hal. Carol whispers, but then Hal realizes what Sinestro is trying to do. He's trying to create fear. I'm going to screw up his plans. He says as he flies down into the city. He gets in front of a news camera and begins to talk to the world. He tells them that this is all a part of the plan that Sinestro is enacting. The man feeds on people's fear, but Hal tells them about all of the planets that he's been to, all of the alien species that he's seen. It's the humans that always rise up against the fear, which is why humans have never been conquered. Sinestro wants us all to be afraid. He wants us to hide in fear at what's lurking in the sky. But I'm here to let you know I'm in the sky too, and I'm not going to stop until you are all safe. Hal then thanks the reporters for their time at leaping back into the air. 
Carol comes back on the radio explaining to their techs that they have found a way to track the last two drones using a strange alien signal that's coming out of Tucson. I feel like you're sending a butt my way, Carol. Then there's a pause before Carol reveals one drone is targeting Washington, D.C., while the other is targeting Moscow. You might reach one, but not both. Hal knows that she's right, but refuses to give up, so he flies into the outer atmosphere, but not high enough for his new ring to give out. He asks Carol for one of the techs to relay a course so that his constructs can intercept the two drones. With the tech on the line, Hal pushes himself, creating two high-speed techs, one a dog, the other an eagle. The tech directs the signal of the constructs so that they speed towards the final two drones, and with small corrections, Hal continues to move them towards them, sweat breaking out on his forehead from the strain. And as the drones near their targets, Sinestra orders their drone operators to fire. But the constructs reach them at the last moment, destroying the drones before they can open fire, before they can destroy Washington, before they destroy Moscow. At Ferris, everyone's cheering in victory. What's the location of Sinestro? Hal wants to know. Over in Tucson, King Shark and the others are trying to escape, but the wall explodes inward, throwing them all to the ground. I'm going to enjoy putting an end to you, Hal says as he walks through the smoke. Did you think that you could scare my planet, jumpstart your ring, and become the great Sinestro again? But Sinestro keeps his back to Hal. He explains that he merely wanted to go home, that he wanted to return to Korrigar. But then you had to stop me, the hero, the optimist, Sinestro whispers. Hal shakes his head. Not sorry to disappoint you. But Sinestra also shakes his. Disappoint me, no. You haven't disappointed me. You've done something more. You've given me a gift. Sinestra says, and as he turns around, his eyes begin to glow red as he floats in the air. His ring now charged, but not with fear. You have filled me with rage! He bellows as the red energy begins to pulse off of him. Powered by the Red Lantern ring, Sinestro charges at Hal, who is forced to rapidly create shield constructs to block Sinestro's incoming attacks. Die, Jordan, die! Sinestro bellows, but Hal creates a rocket, strapping Sinestro to it, trying to get the rage-filled villain away. Sinestro merely bellows with rage, detonating the rocket. He charges after the fleeing Hal Jordan, who knows that Sinestro's unchecked rage will destroy everything around them. Sinestro, you have to calm down. This isn't you. Hal shouts back, but Sinestro ignores him, claiming that this is the real him. This is power. The anger that I've kept at bay for eons now flows throughout me, giving me the strength I so richly deserve. The universe sowed a mockery of who I was, and now they will reap destruction! Sinestro opens his mouth wide, belching red fire at Hal, who is forced to throw up a green wall to block the attack. We'll see about that. Hal says through gritted teeth, creating several Gatling guns that open fire on the villain. The green rounds knock Sinestro away, but seem to have little effect on him. Yes, to do your worst! My rage makes your will-powered constructs feel like nothing! Do you hear me, Jordan? Sinestro shouts before creating a massive red monster that charges at Hal Jordan, a kaiju beast that crashes through his wall construct, sending him plummeting towards the earth below. Sinestro then creates a massive scythe and rushes at Hal. Time to join your friend! He shouts, but the rockets slam into him, knocking him away, and Hal looks up in shock as three jets streak by. On the ground, Sinestro gets to his feet and looks at the fleeing jets with anger. Impudence! He snarls before leaping into the air to give chase. There's no escape from Sinestro's rage! He shouts before creating a massive monster that bites down on all three jets. But Hal is there, creating a massive arrowhead around himself that allows him to break through the monster. And inside, the pilots are falling to the earth, but Hal catches them with tentacles of a great octopus, gently putting them back down to the ground. As the pilots are free, Hal looks up to see Sinestro floating nearby. How brave. The villain sneers, and the red energy begins to ripple around him as he creates another construct that begins to grow. But how will you save your world when I rip it in half? Sinestro questions as he is surrounded by another massive kaiju. But a beam shoots out of its jaws and it begins to cut the earth in half. Hal leaps into the air and begins to form his own construct. Just like this, he creates a massive green lantern and mech that stands ready to fight the kaiju. He then creates a massive sword charging at Sinestro's kaiju. The two lock in battle, the ground rumbling beneath their feet as they knock each other aside, destroying buildings around them. 
And finally, the two lanterns, their energies pressing off of against each other. Sinestro, something's wrong. The emotional spectrum isn't supposed to be doing this. We need to stop. Hal says, trying to get Sinestro to listen to reason. I'll never stop. Sinestro bellows, the energy striking against each other, creating a massive explosion. Hal reaches out with his ring, trying to contain it so that it doesn't destroy the city around them. And as the blast dissipates, Hal struggles to remain in the air, his body exhausted. You have to stop this. The rage isn't normal. You don't know what it'll do. Hal whispers, but Sinestro refuses, his red energy wrapping around him again. It'll get me back to Kuragar. The consequences be damned. I will show everyone that the rage of Sinestro is to be more than feared. He says as he rockets up into the sky. Hal tries to give chase, but when they reach the edge of Earth's atmosphere, his ring's power begins to fade, and he has no choice but to watch Sinestro escape. So Hal returns to his trailer outside of the city, where he finds Kilowog waiting for him with a beer. What happened to you, Poozer? You look like the time you rode the Indian Spike Beetle in Ballas. Kilowog notes as he takes a swig of beer. Hal shakes his head, explaining what happened with Sinestro, that something is wrong with the emotional spectrum. You're right, Lantern Jordan, but it seems that something is wrong here as well. A voice calls out of the darkness, and Hal is surprised as Razor walks towards him. I've come a long way to find my former ally, my friend. Talking to a construct of Kilowog? What's going on, Lantern Hal Jordan? Razor asks, and Hal sighs, looking back at Kilowog, and the construct disappears. Razor, Kilowog is dead, and it's all my fault, Hal says softly. If you want to know what's going on with Hal Jordan, because I do, make sure you like and subscribe, because this story's not over yet. It's to be continued.